All right, guys, what is going on? Welcome to another video. It is Saturday morning, so technically it's St. Patty's Day. Hopefully I get this uploaded on St. Patty's Day. And in the last video, which I did the voiceover for, I think the day before yesterday, I told you guys I was coming down with something else post antibiotics, and that is definitely going away. Probably 95% of the reason is that I've just been getting more rest. I've been sleeping about seven hours a night now versus five and a half or six. And I've taken an hour nap minimum the past three days in a row. So seven to eight hours of perfect sleep has made a big difference versus five and a half. And that's honestly the main reason why I feel better. So after three full body training sessions, I went in on a Sunday. We did Monday, Wednesday, Friday, I took Saturday off and went in on Sunday. All those sessions were pretty easy, but I was still on antibiotics. So I remember I preached to you guys to stay safe and stay out of the gym when you're sick. I really didn't take my advice maybe as seriously as I should have, but those sessions were very easy and I was benching probably 80% of my regular working weight. So although it's still significant, since I don't bench something that's very challenging as far as well, I guess it is challenging, but 80% of something I do every single day is definitely significantly less. So on this first full upper body session, I went up to, I think, 235 pounds and things were just flying very, very easily. This actually was the first day I went to 245 pounds. So you can see the 45 or the 10 pounds on each side and the reps are flying. My shoulder felt great. The form here on this set is perfect. The barbell is staying perfectly horizontal to the ground, which sometimes my right side has a tendency to go lower and then finish higher and that's just because who knows could be different limb lengths different pec insertions it's all of those things combined with maybe just not being careful enough so regular full body session is looking like bench press and pull-ups I'm not even really rowing right now which is a bad idea but again I'm sick so I want to be a hundred percent adjusting to the weather adjusting to living here adjusting to the new cats I live with, adjusting to the dryness, the temperature, everything makes a big difference, new work schedule, even new lifting schedule, new strength and new diet, it all makes a very big difference, new people, so um, yeah, it's just something for my body and my immune system to get used to, and that might take a year or two, so whatever, it is what it is, it's easier to move to a more tropical climate than it is to move to a northern dry climate, at least in my experience. Not that I've moved very much, but that's just how I feel my body reacts. So. The upper body session had a little bit of fluff and pump at the end. What I do for my staple arm and delt exercises is um, straight bar cable press downs, dumbbell curls, side laterals, and shoulder press. Those are about my four accessory exercises, and I will throw in cable extensions and rear delts as well. So in a given week, I'll do about 10 exercises, and that's all you need to maximize your muscle growth. Really, that's all you need. So I've discovered that after 11 years of lifting, something that I had an idea of a few years ago when I was doing powerlifting training and that idea was proven and holds true at least in my physique which is probably true for every single person if you're training the way I am with my intensity and my duration so after this workout we're gonna get into leg training and I will go into the comments during the leg training and just talk a little bit about or answer some of your guys' questions so I'll see you guys in a minute Holy crap. I've enjoyed catching up on the latest videos of uh, basically full body training and then upper lower, but it is almost 4 p.m. on a Monday, so taking that rush hour break. Haven't been home in exactly 24 hours, but it's been a great couple days relaxing over the weekend. Hit my goal, so now we're starting off today. It's Monday, like I said. No training today because we hit that upper body session yesterday, which was awesome. So this morning, um, after hanging out last night, and realizing that I had a nail in my tire. I woke up at around 6 a.m., drove for an hour or two since the tire was holding air perfectly fine, then went to Subaru for an oil change and to have my tire patched. So 96 bucks later, and this morning is now gone, but last night went and did a little home improvement shopping. So we're gonna organize this, get to cooking, and this bedroom is going to be made proper right after this. Grocery store pickups on a Monday. Protein sources are eggs, chicken, egg whites, and some 91% beef. This was the most expensive part, $9, $12, it's 21, plus four, plus nine. So that's about 33 bucks right there. And then we spent a little bit of money on some carb sources. Have rice and potatoes here, obviously. Little junk food and then tons of veggies. 
more fruit, another carb source. Ready to keep hustling. I'm gonna drive this evening as well, as soon as I can. So let's get this cooking up. I was gonna do cardio, but I think if I have a coffee and do everything that I have to do with this, it's cardio enough. So I'm gonna set you guys down on here, and I'll see you soon. Both the main carb sources right here, jasmine rice and boiling some gold potatoes and garlic and herb seasoning with olive oil, beef, veggies, and chicken. And oh yeah, I gotta show you guys the upgrade to action. Maximum comfort, all about that maximum comfort. And next time I see you guys, probably be getting ready to train or training, so I'll catch you guys then, peace. So in the upper body session, you guys did not see me hit any fluff and pump because I didn't want to film. And this was a Sunday and I was really dragging ass to get in the gym. I wasn't too motivated, I was a little worried about squatting. So I squatted, did hacks, I did a couple sets of curls and extensions and calves which I didn't film, but you guys will see the meat and potatoes of the workout. So let's go into the YouTube comments on the latest video and see what's up. Let's see, beast aesthetics that sickness leaned you out. Well, honestly, I've just been trying to eat less muffins and less cereal, whoa. And uh, that's been doing the trick. Uh, you should consider upper lower push pull legs for those goals. Dedicated arm and shoulder day. Honestly, I don't think dedicated arm and shoulder days are good for my physique. They cause me to have tendonitis in my elbows and shoulder impingement. So if I could gain an eighth of an inch on my arms in a month or two doing isolation work, that would quickly be reversed when I can't bench press and do pull-ups optimally. So I don't want to gain an eighth of an inch on my arms and not be able to bench and do pull-ups because I think in the long run I'll lose muscle on my arms from not doing those compounds. Time for some donuts. Dude, I know I haven't had a donut in so... Actually, I had one last week, didn't film it. But yeah, I need a cheat meal or a cheat day one of these days. How many times per week are you lifting? I'm sick taking antibiotics, blah, blah, blah. Um, I'm lifting three to four times a week, four times a week in an absolute maximum. And if you, can, if you can physically go to the gym and do more than four sessions per week, you're not doing enough in those sessions. You're either doing not enough intensity, which means weight, not enough volume, or you're isolating so many muscles that it just takes you forever to hit your entire body. If you're doing overhead press, bench, and squats, and pull-ups, there's only a few exercises you actually have to do to stimulate every muscle in your body. But if you have a chest day, a back day, a shoulder day, a quad day, a hamstring day, you're gonna struggle and you're gonna be in the gym all week and have no life and probably worse results. Do you recommend that I do squats with normal speed or really slow like you? I don't know what the definition of normal speed is. Again, you are giving me a arbitrary term as normal which has no weight in the powerlifting and bodybuilding world because nothing about it is really normal. And um, you're telling me that I squat really slow. To me, I squat normal, so I recommend squatting normal like I do. Let's see. Any tips for a 15 year old, 175 pounds lifting four to five times a week? Uh, you're really genetically gifted if you're 175 at 15. Um, copy some of my lifting techniques and strategies. If you see me doing something in the gym that looks a lot different than what you're doing, consider trying what I'm doing or slowly progressing inch by inch, angle of degree by angle of degree into something that I'm doing. So if you're benching wide and you're doing a touch and go and you're wanting tips, bench how I bench. If you are doing a low bar squat like a power lifter and squatting four plates on each side at 175 pounds, I would recommend that you Stop doing that and learn how to high bar squat and maybe get some squatting shoes if you're squatting barefoot, etc. Let's see. Oh, maybe that should be it. There's a lot of questions on interior pelvic tilt. Like I said, guys, the way you fix something that's misaligned is by aligning it. It's that simple. So, happy St. Patty's today to everyone who watched this. It's still Saturday morning, so I'm gonna work for a couple hours and then go party with some old fraternity brothers from FSU and without saying too much, that should be pretty crazy. We'll definitely be doing some bad things because it's fun to do bad things with your friends. So I'll see you guys hopefully in the near future. Peace. <sighs> I'm depleted, Leia, what do you think? Just did some fasted cardio, no food in my system. Let's see how full are you looking these days. Good kid.
Crazy girl.